Good evening and welcome to the Board of Mayor and Alderman Workshop. It is February 1st, 2024, 6.30 p.m. Call this uh, workshop to order. Uh, the prayer on Tuesday night will be by Alderwoman Hobbs. I will have the Pledge of Allegiance. Everyone should have a copy of the minutes from the January 2nd uh, workshop and the January 4th regular meeting. We'll have departmental reports and then we will have... Um, We'll have old business, which is second reading ordinance 2024-01, an ordinance to amend the city of Laverne zoning ordinance by changing the official zoning map for tax map 18F, group C, parcels 5 and 5.01, consisting of approximately 0 0.83 acres located at 512 and 516 Old Nashville Highway from an R3 high density zoning district to a C3 Neighborhood Service Commercial Zoning District. This received a favorable recommendation from the Planning Commission on November 28th, 2023. We will have a public hearing Tuesday night on this, um, and that will be at 6.30. Does anyone have any questions? I got some. Uh, uh, what really concerns me about this is uh, 0.83 acres. That's that's uh, just a little bit over three-quarters of an acre. It's just uh, that concerned me about the uh, the easements and the uh, if in the future if Cheney and Old National Highway is improved, time they get the 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 easements, uh, I feel it ain't gonna be nothing left. Uh, I'm I don't know if the planning commission looked at that or not, but. Uh, uh, I'm sure it'd be 35 foot. You, you take 35 foot on Cheney and 35 foot on Old National Highway, I, I don't see nothing left, but uh, maybe a place to put an outhouse. Uh, yeah, but that's one thing that concerns me. Uh, you know, it's just a small lot. Well, the applicant is not here tonight that I can see. Um, but um, we can always see about reaching out to have him at the meeting, and they can speak to that. We've got Bo. Bo, what was the uh, what was the the discussion in the planning commission on the on the small lot and the right of ways? So it it does appear to be a small area, but they, the applicant did submit a plan. Uh, that was a prototype. I think I mentioned this last month at the workshop too. Um, that plan shows a hypothetical layout for a building. Uh, one is closest to Old Nashville, and the other layout showed the building pushed back with all the parking in the front. So, um, according mm -hmm. to their prototype plan, of course, if this rezoning goes through, they'll have to come back in the future with the site plan. Uh, just like any other project, but they they've shown that they've got space to build um, I'm gonna say a small to medium-sized retail center. Yeah, I just I just don't you know if you put if you take the, if Even the old National Highway goes three lanes and you put a turn lane on Cheney You know you you're you you you're cutting most of that uh, that, that V up there is gonna be gone um, well, they've got both <clears throat> prototypes in the packet showing that, and at least with one of them, um, there's plenty of setback for um, actually Cheney and Old Nashville. But we don't, whenever it comes to setbacks, we don't really address that until it's site plan because the rezoning is looking at the feasibility as far as what, we're, what is being looked at for use, not site. I do know Rafiq speaking to him after the last meeting. Uh, Glenn, sc scroll down just a little bit and I'll stop right there. Um, the high density uh, property just to the south of it, they are also speaking to the owners about purchasing, which would um, do the same. They would merge it in with this, which would add some significant volume. Yeah, I just. Uh, it, uh, <clears throat> Did the city even ask for donation of the right of way? <clears throat> that I'm, wouldn't come up for a rezoning. That would come up with site plan and platting. Yeah, I just, uh, I just. 
Yeah, and I, I know this section is scheduled to be a three-lane section, I believe, unless uh, there's new information. I don't think it's a four-lane or five-lane in the future. It's just a three-lane, so it's really, it's not as much uh, road width as you might expect. And on the intersection, though, how you put the turning lanes and everything, it would, it would probably be a, at least a, a, a four or five lane because you have a, you'd have to have a, if, it, if it's got a center three lane there, you got, you got three lanes. If you got an ingress and an outgress, that's, that, that's four lanes right there. Now if you look at concept plan A, you can see where the building would be set back. And so um, the, what you're proposing as an additional turn lane off of Cheney would be part of, of where a detention area is. But the building is far enough back because it's not going to be all one property. It would be both, you know, this property donating land and, um, and the, uh, I think it's the Warnick property um, right near it donating property. So What was the time frame on doing anything at all to Old National Highway? There's not that, one. That I don't know. Yeah. I think the last discussion was 35 know, to 40 million dollars. I come through there this afternoon and it's pretty congested there. Uh, that, that was my only concern. You know, the, 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 the only pro that I see on it, it's already zoned apartments. You, you trade the oranges, but kind of oranges for apples, but it just, it, it is a little lot. It is a little lot and that's, that's what concerns me. Thank you, Bo. Thank you. Any other questions? Moving on to old business, second reading ordinance 2024-02, an ordinance to amend Article 4, Section 4.010 of the Learned Zoning Ordinance regarding off-street parking requirements. This also received a favorable recommendation from the Planning Commission on November 28th, 2023, and we will have a public hearing on this Tuesday evening. This is second reading. Does anyone have any questions? Yeah, I do. Uh, I know it should be in a package, but can somebody explain that for the people who are watching that, that, that don't have a package? So as we said last month, this is basically modernizing our off-street parking for apartments. Um, it's breaking it into two categories where you have uh, gated communities and non-gated, and it's setting the number of spaces uh, per units. That's that. That's to do with with new with new uh, uh, add more parking for like the the new construction for for new apartments. Yes, whether it's gated or not gated. Seeing no other questions, we're going to move on to the consent agenda. First, we've got approve or reject city bids and purchases. <coughs> um, first, we've got the bid on Bain Drive water and sewer relocation project. Um, the city received two bids for this and uh, the lowest one was from Jarrett Builders of Nashville at $2,489,714. Um, the next bid was from Smith Brothers, um, which was 4.2 million. Both bids were above estimated cost. Um, and looking at everything, staff is recommending that we reject all bids. Any questions? Why are, is it because of the price, Kyle, or because of the people doing it? It's the price. Uh, the estimate was like one and a half, and, and basically it come back at two and a half, and it's for a road project that's associated with um, the industrial access grant and so we want to discuss this further with TDOT because the original grant I think was for around 1.6 million for the road improvements. So all of the budget is really out of order uh, when you're looking at relocating this amount of water and sewer lines, two and a half million dollars for a $1.5 million project. Don't even make sense. So we just need to re rethink this whole project. Thank you, Kyle. Moving on to number two, state contract purchase, internal network cable and installation for fire station 41 construction project. Um, this is about $55,140. Um, this is part of this year's budget. And um, this is for all the necessary audio hardware and network hardware for that, for the new fire station. 
Does anyone have any questions on that? Number three, state contract purchase, security camera hardware and installation for Fire Station 41 construction project. Um, again, this is just like it sounds, $15,538. And again, this is part of the budget. Does anyone have any questions? Number four, state contract purchase, access control hardware and installation for Fire Station 41 construction project. Um, this is all access control hardware and installation. Um, the price is $38,153, and this is also part of the budget. Does anyone have any questions? Was all these add-ons here, or what, is this part of the, the original uh, 11 million or whatever it was? This is, this is part of the whole project. Okay. Moving on to B, approve a professional service agreement with Crofton Associates LLC for the Upper Cheney Woods Interceptor Sewer Appraisals and Market Study. Um, so this is, uh, you know, to avoid utility conflicts, we need to acquire some easements um, for, four, uh, for 5409 and 5404 Murfreesboro Road. Um, you can see the breakdown. The total in fees is 12500 does anyone have any questions? And this will come out of water and sewer fund. Yes. And <clears throat> yes. Next, we've got the uh, change order number one with CTI for the Upper Cheney Woods Interceptor Sewer Project. So um, this is 6,800 linear feet of 21 inch and 3,200 of 18 inch gravity sewer uh, with manholes, incidentals, all of that. Um, the original contract price was 5.8 million. Um, the contract price will decrease by 308,656. Um, the new contract price, including the change order, will be uh, 5.5 million dollars, and the contract time will increase by 120 days. Um, so the new completion date is June 28th of this year. Does anyone have any questions? So the next one is ratify the approval of a grant contract with the State of Tennessee Department of Commerce and Insurance for the provision of grant funds for tuition assistance, training and professional development expenses for the Tennessee Law Enforcement Training Academy, um, Talia. Um, this is a unique one and it has not been signed yet. This is one that has a due date though before our meeting. So to get it in, it would need to be signed before our meeting, which is why it's mentioned as a ratification. And so this is essentially $40,000 for five years for a total of $200,000. And we don't have a matching portion with that. Is that right, Chief? That's correct. So we're looking at $200,000 of free money. So that's what this is. So um, this will be on the agenda as a ratification for Tuesday night. What did you say? It had to be done before our meeting? Yes, it has to be turned in by Monday. Am I correct? That's correct. We were actually given an extension as well, uh, but the extension didn't get us past the uh, BOMA meeting. So it has to be signed and turned in prior to the BOMA meeting on Tuesday. The BOMA meeting? That's, that, that's, that's the Yankee in him. <laughs> We're working on it. Bauma. Bauma. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Does anyone have any questions about... Sorry, Chief. I, had, I ain't seen you in a while. I had to gouge at you a little bit. I can... I'm turning red. <laughs> Moving on to E, approved contract with Greater National Regional Council for the provision of special census field verification and review services. Um, so this is tied to um, the census that we've been doing. The maximum cost for this will be $41,591. Um, that it, There's a high probability we're not going to reach that amount, but still we go worst case scenario. Um, the city will be uh, charging the city a $2,500 upfront fee and then charging $60 per hour for the time conducting the review of the census. And so um, this is normal. It's just the price kind of jumped up on us from prior years, but GNRC has done that across the board. And you can kind of see that with all of the various cities that 
have uh, started doing censuses. Does anyone have any questions? So when is the closeout date on the census? We're looking at March. We have to have it turned into GNRC by March 1st. Okay. Next, we've got F, approve annual uh, renewal of GIS management services for the police department flex CAD system. And so this is just our annual renewal uh, for GNS or for GIS services through Motorola. And so um, the renewal cost is $28,612. Does anyone have any questions? I don't have on F, but on Bruce, on C, I'd like for C to be pulled off consent, but on record. Since it's such a big amount, 5.5 million, I'd like for it to be put on a, a by itself. The reduction change order? Yeah. Where we're reducing the the total price by 300000 Is that correct? You're wanting that off of the consent? We reducing it 300000 Yes, that's what I said, and that's what's in the packet. That's a reduction, not an increase. Reduction? Yes. Okay. I think it's 308000 What if it's a reduction? I, I can move with it. Leave it on there. Okay, moving on to new business, first reading ordinance 2024-03, an ordinance to amend the fiscal year 2023-2024 general fund budget. And um, this is a budget for the purchase of mobile surveillance uh, cameras for the police department. Um, the total budget amendment is $30,000. Um, the a total of 12,000 will be added to the grant revenue line item and the remaining 18 will come out of fund balance. Does anyone have any questions? Number eight, resolution 2024-03, a resolution to acquire easements for the Upper Cheney Woods Interceptor Sewer Line project by eminent domain. And so um, this is just like it sounds, it'll allow the city to acquire two easements needed for the Upper Cheney Woods Interceptor Sewer Line project. Does anyone have any questions? Resolution 2024-04, resolution to amend the City of Laverne check signing policy. Um, this will amend the check signing policy to allow the senior finance specialist to sign checks as a backup to the finance director. Um, doesn't change any of the requirements for the board signatures. It's just adding one extra person to that process um, if the finance director is not available. Does anyone have any questions? Moving on to number 10, motion to approve addendum number two, professional services for the Brookside Park revision. And so uh, this is for upgraded costs uh, from the Reagan Smith uh, revisions. And this is a total of $5,900. Does anyone have any questions? We're good with this, David. <clears throat> yes, please, sir. Please, this way, anyone this watching can a, hear you. This has been a headache. Well, for me, it is. <laughs> trying to understand. Don't lose your hair over it. Thank you, board. Um, yes, sir, Vice Mayor. I think this is the only way we're going to find out whether the state is going to accept our proposal or not. If we get any grant funds, we're going to have to submit this first. Um, that's the only option we have now to see if they're going to move forward with it or not. So you submit this, and they're either going to say yay or nay, but it's going to cost us $5,900 either way. That's what I want to see. Even if we approve this, it, it may not, they may not accept it. Correct. Is yes, that sir. right? Yes, sir. But if they do, then, then the, we don't have to worry about the grading and the And the parking dirt, lot the parking and, lot and, and all the that. walking trail tied back in, I believe. Um, they're taking out the playground equipment. Um, the shelter, um, we suggest leaving a 20 by 20 pad for a future shelter to be built on. Um, that's basically what they're taking out. They're leaving, I think they're going to lower the asphalt um, specifications maybe in the parking lot. And Kyle or Gary may jump in on that. Well, they're going to look at that because currently what they have is basically a street section. So we told them to look at what the cost would be if they, or see if they could reduce that down to more of a parking lot section as opposed to a street section. Okay. I would just say that for staff, um, I know we, we still have to hear from TDEC, but if this is the direction we go, we need to, during uh, our budget sessions, come up with a plan to turn, you know, to build upon this 
so that the residents in that area have a uh, well built out and uh, functioning park. Yes, sir. Thank Any you, Dave. Question? Thank you. So moving on to appoint or remove board and committee members. First, we have the beer board. We do have one applicant, that's Jamie Knight. And this has been advertised on Channel 3 and on social media. So um, I will, if we have any other applicants, that will be added by Tuesday. And I will appoint someone and the board will confirm um, for that for your term Tuesday night. Next, we've got the Board of Zoning Appeals. We've got two terms that are expiring. Both applicants wish to remain on the, the Board of Zoning Appeals and uh, no one else has applied. So that will be on the agenda Tuesday night. Next, we have the Construction uh, Board of Adjustment and Appeals. And so we have got two terms that have expired um, as of yesterday and both wish to remain on this board. Um, if there are any other applicants that will be added on Tuesday night, but this will be part of the, um, the agenda. Then we've got the Greenway Advisory Committee, and we've got one term that expired, and that applicant does wish to be reappointed. No one else has applied, but if they do, it will be added on for Tuesday night. The Library Board, we've got one vacant term, and we have one applicant, so that will be on the agenda for Tuesday. The Local Emergency Planning Commission, we have uh, multiple um, vacancies, and... Um, We've got some that will uh, staff is recommending to put on there and we will address that Tuesday night. Then last, we've got the stormwater appeals and advisory board. We've got three terms expired on there and we still don't, do not have any applicants. So if we do not have anyone apply by Tuesday night, that will be removed from the agenda. Moving on to uh, mayor and alderman comments, Alderman Waldron. Yes, uh, remember tomorrow's Groundhog Day. That's when we find out if we're going to have six more weeks of bad weather or not. Hopefully, we'll have six more weeks of good weather. Well, I think we've had enough snow and ice for a while. And, uh, again, check on the elderly and make sure your pets have fresh water and, and ample shelter. Thank you. Alderman Woman Haas. Uh, just a reminder that baseball and softball sign-ups are at the park, the back of uh, baseball fields on Sunday afternoons. Get out there and get your kiddos signed up for a springtime of great activity and everyone have a great evening. Vice Mayor now. Yes sir, I got a couple things. First of all, all you department heads, city employees, thank you so much for what you en endured through all of the, the snow and the bad weather, especially the Mike and his crew. I mean, they're still out there fighting it, but I know y'all were out of work and uh, pulling your hair out. I see we got some new people joining the city. I'd like to see that. Uh, especially to the census people. I know some of y'all are out there have been doing the census. Some of you's been getting some strange looks. Some people even brought up on social media about the fire department. Why is the fire department out here? And you know, it's a never ending thing. But one more thing, I'm gonna bring this back up Tuesday. To anybody that's watching at home, January or uh, yeah, February, February 24th, 7 a.m. till noon at the senior center. Uh, I've managed to work up another electronic dumpster. So if you've got any kind of electronics that you are having problems getting rid of, January 24th, 7 to noon at the senior center. There is no charge, but we will be taking donations, and all donations will be going to the seniors at the Senior Center. That's it. Thank you, sir. I um, want to remind everybody this Saturday we've got the uh, Daddy-Daughter Dance. Um, last year was absolutely packed, and it uh, should be a lot of fun. We've got music, lots of sugary sweets. Uh, David's team has been putting together, so it um, should be a fun time. Um, I do want to echo what the vice mayor said. Thank you to Michael Dietz and his team. They've been out uh, plowing the roads like crazy, salting, trying to get as much of it gone as they can. But you can only do so much with below freezing temperatures and ice everywhere. So thank you to you and your staff. Um, I also want to thank Doug and his team because of 
all the work that they've been doing on the potholes. And I know y'all been getting worn out with it, um, but as I told uh, the public works director, I even submitted some online, and with them not even knowing I submitted them, they were still filled within 24 hours. So um, if you see them, please report them online or call and ask to speak to Doug, and Doug will personally take that <laughs> and get those filled. With that, I call this meeting adjourned. <laughs>